Hey everyone, it's Logan, and again, we're continuing the Q&A with the Thrills United Regional Reps, and this one is going to be another fully coaster-related one. So if you don't like coasters, again, I'm sorry. But the first question is, what defunct coaster do you miss the most? That I've ridden, Volcano the Blast Coaster. Okay, I think I miss Canon in Lisbeth the most. The thing is, I know they have Helix now, and Helix is just a bigger, better version of Canon. Uh, but the thing is, Canon was actually more intense than Helix. The launch was just, yeah, it was a cable launch, and I love cable launches. So I kind of missed uh, Canon last time I visited Lisbeth, and I do think Canon was just as good as Valkyrie the new ride. So yeah, I think Canon in Lisbeth is the coaster that I miss the most. The defunct coaster that I miss most is Canon at Lisbeth. The defunct coaster that I probably miss the most would definitely be Vortex at Kings Island. I only got to ride it a couple of times and I rode it on its last day and I loved it so much. It was so much fun and I really wish I could ride it again. The, the, the fun coaster the most is Trenino della Miniera at Luneur, at the old Luneur. That ride closed with the park in 2007 and I remember that when I was a kid my father used to take me to Luneur almost every week and I used to love that ride. Miss it so much. My favorite defunct coaster that I miss the very most has to be Volcano the Blast Coaster at Kings Dominion. This is truly an iconic coaster and a, such a unique ride. I think that no other regional representative will have the same answer as I do because I had an emotional connection to this coaster. I don't even remember if it was like a really good coaster or not, but it was one of the coasters that got me into coasters and I wish that it was still at the park. But Dueling Dragons at Universal Studios Orlando I love that coaster so much. Um, I It was one of the only coasters I was willing to ride because I, I loved Harry Potter and I wasn't as into coasters at that point. And I just wish it was still there because I loved it so much. I mean, I like B&M inverts a lot and I would probably look at the ride a little differently as a coaster enthusiast, but I just remember I loved it so much. So I wish it was still there so I could ride it because I was like 11 the last time I rode it. The defunct coaster we miss most is Dragon Challenge at Islands of Adventure. We miss this coaster so much because the theming on it was amazing and it was just such an amazing addition to the park and it was my personal favorite coaster at the entire Universal Resort. Honestly, I miss Dragon's Challenge at Islands of Adventure. I just miss that ride so much for a coaster. It was just so fun, like having the dueling inverts. I never got to ride it when it was dueling, but Oh, I just love that thing. And I honestly, I do have to give something to Universal Energy at Epcot. That was my favorite ride when I was little, and I'm sad that it's gone. But I definitely say those two rides were easily my two most missed. Like, I would take them back any day of the week. The defunct coaster I miss the most is not technically a defunct coaster. It is a Stan Bonato parading coaster. It is Chimera at La Feria. But if I have to choose a uh, real defunct coaster, a definite defunct coaster, it would be um, Dragon Challenge at Islands of Adventure. I think the defunct coaster that I probably miss the most is Vortex at Kings Island. It was actually my 100th coaster and I'm really bummed that I only got one ride on it. The defunct coaster that I miss the most is definitely Vortex. Oh, I love that ride so much. I don't really have any defunct credits except the Kitty Coaster at Great Adventure, um, but if I could bring back a coaster, like from being defunct and ride it, it would probably be um, Batman and Robin the Chiller at the same park. Now, I've only ridden one defunct coaster, which would be Vortex at Kings Island, which I miss a lot and I love it so much. But honestly, um, I feel really bad that I never got to ride Green Lantern at Six Flags Magic Mountain because it was at my home park and I never rode it. So honestly, I think I'd say that. As for defunct coasters that I've ridden, I probably miss Cyclone at Six Flags New England the most, and Wicked Cyclone I definitely like better, but Cyclone was just a fun ride. So I've only been riding coasters for like six years, so I haven't ridden that many defunct coasters, and like I miss Vortex and I miss Volcano the Blast Coaster, but the one I miss the most is probably Firehawk at Kings Island, because that's a fairly rare like kind of coaster, like a Vacoma flying coaster, you don't see those every day. And it was just 
a super fun ride and actually pretty intense like the loop was really intense and i just loved riding it almost every time i went to king's island and then seeing that area after it was removed it was very weird and it will probably be even weirder to see a massive giga instead of a little flying coaster now the next question what is your favorite roller coaster restraint malfunction story i was on jackrabbit and i think i was by myself and as you guys know on jackrabbit there's not a full restraint it's a buckle it's a little clip and that happened to come on done right before the double down I look down and i see it i'm like oh no and in the on ride photo my head isn't even in the frame it's just my torso down i'm just floating in the seat that was hilarious i don't really know but when i was on silver streak when i was like nine or ten <laughs> like a little vacoma family suspended coaster, I think like the seatbelt part, not the restraint of course, like not the lap bar, but I think the seatbelt was undone and I was freaking out. <laughs> I haven't really had a big like malfunction story, but when I was at King's Dominion with Dane, our seatbelts came undone on Woodstock Express, so that was kind of scary, but we also got a lot of airtime. Okay, this isn't exactly a restraint malfunction, but I was riding Riddler's Revenge at Magic Mountain with Abe and Maddie and the legend Max Theme Parks himself, and the ride stops on the lift hill and we think, uh, did this break down? And then this guy comes up to me and he's like, uh, sorry, your, your seatbelt's not clipped into the shoulder harness. And I was just like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize that. I'm glad the ride's not broken down. He's like, yeah, I just, I saw it hanging, go, hanging out, leaving the station. I was like, oh no. When I went to maybe water for my friend, we were on a ride and I pulled down the harness and then, um, I pulled down my harness and my friend pulled, pulled down his and then um his one unbuckles a bit before about to launch but then like and we thought it was gonna launch so he started freaking out but then we realized that um that like someone behind us had their restraint like their restraint wasn't working so they had to undo um his one which undid, undid his Okay, so my favorite malfunction story, it's not really a malfunction, I think it was more of a ride malfunction, but it was on Tower of Terror, I was sitting down, I poured, put my seatbelt on, lots of room, I filled it up, put it in my pocket so the seatbelt looked like it was in when I really had a ton of room. And then we get on the ride, and I just remember, we get on, he goes, the Tower of Terror, you hear the cracking sounds, the ride drops. That was the most forceful drop I've ever felt on any drop tower. Like, I'm talking, that was free fall or something. I don't know what went wrong. But it just stops. And I caboosted out of my seat. That's a word. And when I sat down, the lights, the work lights all went on. And we stopped for about three seconds. I didn't let go. I just, like, let a little less so I had a little bit of room. Like, acting like I was holding on my seatbelt because it's the only thing I had to hang on to, technically. And then it stops for about, it goes like one, two, and then the ride just keeps going with the work lights on, okay? The reason why I knew it was way too forceful is because everyone else grabbed onto something. I've never seen that happen on a ride. And then when we come out, all the work lights are on. They come us off. I'm like, oh no, am I about to get kicked out of Disney? I don't get any warning. And then that side was closed for the rest of the day, that side of Tower of Terror. So that was pretty terrifying. My voice is cracking because so I'm remembering it, but... Oh, that was easily the most thrilling <laughs> experience I've had. That was terrifying and amazing at the same time. One roller coaster malfunction story is when I was younger and I went on Comet at Hershey Park for the first time. My seatbelt wasn't clicked in fully, so on some of the last airtime hills, it ended up coming off and I started popping out of my seat. I was pretty small back then, so I got a lot of airtime, which is pretty freaky. One restraint malfunction story that's a little bit less fun than Comet was on Bizarro last year. We had just come out of the station and we were on the little dip right before the lift hill when my restraint actually became unlocked. It went up and then back down. I was incredibly scared, but luckily it relocked on the lift hill and I was safe, but it was just very freaky. I don't really have any roller coaster restraint malfunction stories, but there is a famous one in my family that happened at Kings Island around the late 80s when my parents were in college and they rode king cobra which you guys probably know is a togo stand-up coaster that's not there anymore but it has the like butterfly restraints that like go 
and lock onto your chest. So they start going up the lift hill and I don't know how my mom figured out this, but she noticed that the restraint was unlocked and she was like, oh, uh, what do I do? And then everyone on the train just started screaming for help because my mom was screaming bloody murder. And then my dad was like, just hold on, G-Force will keep you in. And honestly, it probably would. The restraint is like still over your shoulders, but everyone was still screaming. And then, ev and then the train got to the very top and then it stopped. And then one of the ride attendants sprinted up the stairs and clicked on the pedal at the bottom of the train that locked the restraint. And then he asked my mom if she wanted to keep riding or to get off. And she was like, what do you mean? And he said, you walked down the stairs. And she was like, nope. So they ended up riding it and she never rode it again. And I don't know if that happened to anyone else, but if so, that's probably why they ended up closing it down about 10 years later. So that's it for these questions. As always, there's a playlist if you want to see the previous installments for this Q&A. And stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you guys later.